<laughs> and doctors for the ship don't just fall right out of the sky. Nope, nope, nope. Fall right out of the sky. Is this like an intro to a song or something? Must no, happen? that's just what happened with uh, our good friend Coda last session for our D and D campaign. Oh, I mean he, that is true. It sounded it like you're about to start spitting like bars or something. I was ready, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, I am too white to be spitting bars. I ain't no Eminem. I mean, look, <laughs> one can only hope. But yeah, yeah, that was a. You know, I don't. Did we record last session? It is recorded. I haven't posted it yet because I am a video editing slob. I I do not do those things very well. However, uh, Coda, you said you were interested in learning on doing a few things like that for the show. Yeah, I um I actually kind of I will admit I've been a bit in the behind. A, wow, a bit behind of that department, but. I've been kind of researching on some uh, editing techniques that a lot of typical streamers and uh, YouTube people use, but um, yeah, I'm getting there. Hey, it's a new year. Fresh yeah, deal. Yeah, new me. I don't know about new me, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a new well, year. You know, I know you've been working on the new you. Uh, when I was working on the... Uh, you know, last year I was doing that job as a concrete scientist uh, when I wasn't playing D and D on the weekends. It sounds so fake. <laughs> I know it does. A concrete scientist? I didn't know about this. Well, basically, I go around, uh, check your concrete, make sure it's a quality concrete, and if uh, we take some samples and bring it back to the lab, and we test the concrete, and if it's good, cool. Uh, if it's not, it breaks at the wrong tensile strength, and then you got some issues, and we got to let you know that your concrete is not up to standard uh, we, after concrete, our lab tests. Uh, isn't concrete, like, temperature sensitive? Like, it'll explode at the high, high uh, There are things, but, like, a, like that... But for the most part, what we would do is we'd put it in a hydraulic press. Ah, oh, yeah, right. Just press. That. I was the only person that would wear like safety glasses when we were doing that. Like everyone else is like, okay, just fuck it. We're, if I lose an eye, I lose an eye. It's whatever. Yeah, it's not like it's shooting shards of gravel. It's not or... OSHA certified, <laughs> dude. I think I might have been the one of like three people there with an OSHA ten. But oh uh, I, I used to see Coda like riding his bike like every now and then uh, because he'd be uh, not too far from the DOT lab when they contracted me out to do work for the DOT. We'd cut samples out of the road. Oh, oh, hmm. yeah. I mean, I was I... in the, I was in a van, so you weren't going to be able to see me. Uh, but that's what <laughs> I would. you like cut out like a, a four by four square somebody's driveway. Um... <laughs> but like uh you know i guess i put them somewhere else I'm like sorry um, i just need to borrow this real quick no no uh, you take like a cylinder like they have like a, a little ah. circular drill thing and it just like it burrows down into the road and you pull it out out and like we did some of that stuff in portland and ended up with like cobblestone tar and stuff like you, you just see layers so just over time, you just see the aging of the the paveway. Now, speaking of layers, just like concrete, just like an onion, we too have layers because we are also a podcast that we should probably get started. We are a podcast <laughs> about D and D, not roads. Let's start the show. <laughs> <laughs> My headset, if I do that. I can't headbang like this. Can't work under these conditions. Hello and welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you monsters, news, and bits of the road. I am your host, Orion. And I am your host, Sam. Welcome, welcome. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy New Year. It's been an eventful holiday season, but uh, hold on. Let me let me check. Yep. All ten fingers, toes. The in-laws didn't get me this time. 
New year, new uh, new me. <laughs> <laughs> new, <laughs> dude, if we're going to get new me, let's start with like a you know drop in fifty pounds. That that be a my start. bullshit. <laughs> I need to drop double that, but I feel that. Mm. You ride a bike. You're off to a good start, man. Not in this weather. <laughs> it is way too cold. The year is starting off hot. With people jumping judges, you know. <laughs> oh, uh, I heard about that. You know, I, I'm glad I'm not having that guy in my campaign. He jumped right over the DM screen at me. He's like, "What do you mean critical fail? <laughs> you rolled a what? You mean a net one? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, he'd be having none of it. None of it. What'd you say, I roll? <laughs> yeah, this this year's off to a great start. And my birthday is in like a week. Shit. This is true. Um, you know Heck what? Yeah. I I have a surprise for you, Sam. I just need to get around to sending it. <laughs> Sugoi. I feel Sugoi that. Sugoi days. I <laughs> <laughs> Ah, dude. It, I am excited. Uh, Scrim Bimbus, welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. I, I appreciate the the opportunity to make my internet presence presentable. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all start somewhere, and f- for me, I start certainly uh, below the bottom. <laughs> and, you know, just maybe some somewhere under the Earth's crust. That's where I started. Somewhere in the mantle. Started from the yeah. bottom. Are we here? a year later dude but we've been doing this show for a whole year and it's a wild experience next episode is episode 50 and uh, like you said that should be where our kind of our mark for milestones should be i I like that so i I really want you know we have we don't really get a whole lot of comments and you know we get a few replies and stuff but we we really want people to you know what do you want us to talk about or what do you want us to do for this milestone episode we could do like a Q&A we play a game on stream a watch party you know anything you know i really am open to that i was in the middle of setting up a thing that we'd be able to have uh, viewer voicemails yeah like that's really cool I got to finish setting it up, but I I like the idea of being able to have people just uh, maybe talk about their campaigns. Maybe they got some questions, some need some DM tips, player advice. You know, how do I deal with X, Y, and Z? Now, maybe we don't give the best advice, but, you know, something to think about. It's advice that you can work on. (laughs) Yeah. Like I've talked to some people and, you know, they just want to know like, what is D and D? How do you play? Like, what is it actually, you know, what is a good way to get into it? Yeah. Like, okay. First off, uh, it's actually a bunch of uh, people that Mm -hmm. never stopped playing pretend, but (laughs) to make it, (laughs) but we learned early on that saying I do this. Well, actually I, you don't do that because oh, I had God. my anti this shield the entire time and you crazy. cannot do that. Well, I had my anti shield this uh, the entire time that deactivates your anti shield. And it's just like that got boring and repetitive. So uh, <laughs> having grown up and learned from our playground mistakes, we found these little math rocks that dice. Now we didn't want to get confused with gamblers. So uh, that's we, also get confused we, with crack rocks, right? <laughs> exactly so we had to hit a happy medium with the d20 now right, you right. see the the early people the the cavemen of D, gary gygax and other war gamers of the like decided that a d20 is you know reasonable a one in 20 chance is a five percent chance that's very easy math so you you roll boom that percentile that's e- you can figure out percentages for anything at that point. And by having more than just the D6, people don't walk up and be like, you guys gambling? No, no, no. We're playing D&D. Oh, what's that? <laughs> We're playing pretend, but we have rules and dice. Basically. We're playing pretend, but yeah. like adults. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's basically like if you want to do something, like say you want to climb a ladder. 
right? And you look at your set. How well do you climb this ladder? You roll for it. So you get like a 10, right? You climb it like a basic person, you know, no real struggle, no real, you know, speed or specialty to it. Yeah. Kind of depends. I think, yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people are really getting into that ever since Baldur's Gate hit game of the year. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baldur's Gate has been a huge, like, D&D, like, yeah. getter inner. Yeah, it's just like, I love how they integrated the dice rolling into the game. Yeah, it, really it seems so basic, but being able to put the the RNG in front of the player, mm-hmm. that's nice. It's satisfying. You're like, you you're held in anticipation every time. It gives the uh, the immersiveness of actually kind of rolling a dice on the table. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just like my my fate lies right here. Now you can undo that, like my wife tends to, by having saves. So you're like, oh, I better save before I, I roll this. J- that way, I, I, I can undo that. Cheater. Lame. I have been trying so hard not to save scum on my recent playthrough. Scumbag. I've only <laughs> done it like a handful of times. I. Uh, like it's one of those who... things where I'll do it on the condition that I'm only doing it to. I'll do it to make decisions that are just fucking around, but then I'll go back and then make my serious decision. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like you go, you kill an NPC real quick because they annoyed you. I want to see. Right. I want to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Just, just real yeah. quick because they like said some bullshit. I'm gonna save. I'm a fireball quick. this room and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> it was all the time in like Skyrim or Fallout. I'd be like, "What happens if I light this room up real quick?" Like, <laughs> this really takes it to another level because it. You even get a narrator, like, dude. The narration oh, yeah. in Baldur's Gate really does give some of that dungeon master feel, and I can see why a lot of people were like, "Hey, I don't have a D and D group. I'm going to settle for Baldur's Gate as a supplemental D and D." And I have a buddy that that. He's been doing it for uh, quite some time because he couldn't get a proper group together. And he's like, hey, it's the next best thing. And mm-hmm. you know what? He's, right. he's not far off, you know? Man, it'd be so cool if, like, we had people using our server to run their campaigns and stuff. Yeah, more than just us. Uh, yeah. We we are open to having other people run campaigns and poach whatever players they want. It, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, like if you if you and server. your friends need like a platform to work from, we got resources. We got the websites. We got the servers. You know, uh, don't point them at the websites. I keep forgetting to finish that damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got different stuff. It's fine. <laughs> We've got different outlets of media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have. So I mean, many the, the website's functional. It's just like, yeah, it's very unpolished, and I, like I there would... <laughs> are some things that are, <laughs> some things don't work. I, I, I'm a lazy motherfucker. There are some it times happens. where I'm like, it's funny to think that like a group of people could just join and be like, "Hey, we all play D and D. Can we use we like get a chat?" People like that from time to time, yeah. and, and we like, that's kind can of. Can we get a chat our, to use? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, here you go, like. Mm. Yeah, that'd be really cool. My brother's going to be starting a Power Rangers campaign at some point soon. Oh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. Eventually. Yeah, good old Power Rangers Las Vegas. <laughs> Very anticipated. I wonder what the rules for colors or choices will be. Uh, the colors are basically your class. Oh. I would like black, please, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Or uh, silver, if there's like the the metallic colors, you know. So. Yeah, I think there's like the basic six. So I feel like blue would be like the natural. I don't metal. think I'm a red ranger boy. You know what I mean? Like I'm not uh, team yeah. leader. <laughs> I sure as fuck don't have main character energy, so yeah. I'm not being a red ranger. <laughs> <laughs> red uh, ranger when I was energy is, is major protagonist yeah. energy, and I I'm not it, man. I'm not it. I'm good with being like one of the. Oh, they're a different color. They're a little special. I guess that's <laughs> <laughs> they're not a part of the usual group. <laughs> oh my God. I, I like the concept though, with him using Las Vegas as the play setting, like uh, the whole morph grid's been torn. Uh, morphers are falling uh, from the sky. Random denizens of Las Vegas are getting Power Ranger morphing abilities that have no right having them. 
I get my abilities like in the middle of like a strip club lap dance. <laughs> <laughs> you just morph into your power suit. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where'd my dick go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just out there dealing drugs on the corner. <laughs> Yo, armadillo ranger. Huh. He's a damn cop. <laughs> get him. <laughs> I'm not no, a cop. No, 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 I'm just... No. <laughs> it's just a soup. It's just a soup. Ranger, some kind of fed. <laughs> <laughs> All rangers are feds. Oh my God. <laughs> I did recently see a video of somebody oh. uh, asking, like a co- uh, a content creator, if like, are the Power Rangers cops? And then he went through each series, they're debating which ones cops. are cops. There is, is there, one. There is one where they're literally cops, right? Yeah, yeah there is. <laughs> That's SPD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking space police and then there's a uh, time force which oh, yeah like, another like, yes time force is federation. very much they are time cops mm-hmm. yeah. i don't think they leaned into that angle enough show. though ryan i got distracted and i did a thing but I like... <laughs> <laughs> what did you do it's a it's a crow oh god it's backwards it's a crow necklace Oh, like. that is, that is cool. I like that. Thread it through my fingers. I anyway. do that shit all the time. <laughs> all the time. Man. I'm just a yeah. fiddler. People always are probably like, "Why are you always looking down?" It's because I'm fiddling around with my hands. He fiddles. Ah, <laughs> <Like, laughs> oh, damn. It's better to be a fiddler than a diddler. <laughs> <laughs> Next time in D and D, the party attacks all the diddlers. No, no. With the, with the half, with the help of their bard, the fiddler. <laughs> Oh my god. The Fiddler's <laughs> Revenge. I'm just saying, like, people may not like some spicy content in their uh, games, but everyone loves murder hoboing people that deserve it. Yeah, right. People will be like, oh, you did what? <laughs> you have what you... kind of backstory and you did yeah. what? I murdered thee. The big bad evil guy is Jeffrey Epstein, and y'all have full uh, paladin permission to nuke this island. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just saying, some people need a power trip. And obviously, like you just talk to your players before you do anything absurd like that. Like uh, we have talked about on the show, where you sometimes you just really have to set standards. This is what session zero is for. What is okay in your campaign? We got a checklist right here. And most people, most games I've been in, everybody's like. Dude, throw it all out on the table. I don't fucking care. I'm going to bulldoze through shit. And if things get dicey, things get spicy, let the dice fall where they may. But not every group's like that. Right. Do we do we really have a checklist? Uh I mate, I did ask everybody at the start, but I everyone oh, was yeah. so chill with everything that no one really thought about it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was like, we hey, all pretty hey. much have like that uh dark humor like don't really get offended type of energy well yeah. it's more fun that way in my opinion because you like, get the you get the raw humor yeah yeah you don't get that like the the pc which i mean cool but raw unfiltered humor is <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <It's just true. laughs> listen there's a reason why people uh have made an entire living off of Hitler jokes. It's not because Hitler was a good guy. It's because it's fun to make fun of tragedies. This is how people laugh. <laughs> right. It's fun to make fun of bad things. And personally, I would love to resurrect Hitler to make him look at how much of a joke he is, because that'd be hilarious. It's like it, Dude, there's imagine... uh, oh, like a historical roast. Just like put him in a box and just be Dude, like... Dude, <laughs> imagine like being like vlad the impaler you know coming back to life and then seeing all the memes that people make about you like <laughs> and all the like dramatizations that are in hollywood resurrect vlad the impaler and watch him make him watch twilight be like yo dude, this book's about you, bro. you inspired this genre of belief <laughs> You you made uh, you made women love fey va- vampires. Congratulations, y'all ain't even undead no more. It's all fey. <laughs> have you seen that meme where it's like you can't kill yourself, you can't put this on it, but you have to eat it? Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, 
All I know is I have a kid trying to break into my room while we're doing the show, and it's just like, ah, come on, kid. Stop. Here's Johnny. Damn. Uh, Bust down the door, child. Fine, fine. Come here. Come here. Yes. We're 20 Daddy. minutes in, and people are probably like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> yeah. Audio only listeners get to not have to see adorable baby attached to my hip once again. Look, all of a reason, all. All, all of the more reason for you to watch our streams. Sometimes there's a baby. Sometimes there is. But you know what? Uh, Scrim, uh, what is your uh, general experience with D&D? Like, how'd you get into the hobby? Uh, honestly, you you introduced me to it. Really? Like, I, I thought you had really been playing way before that. Pop, uh... No, actually, uh, I really hadn't been exposed much to D D before i met you in uh job core so aside from that like Ugh. i of course <laughs> yeah shout out to job core Woo! a lot the of people get to start playing D D in the most prison like experience they can possibly have <laughs> right R- remember like, when we had he heshi on he, he first played oh. D in in the slammer dude it comes full circle man yeah, but that, that's yeah. why if I ever get jailed, I know what books uh, I'm buying from the kiosk. Like, oh uh, someone put money on the commissary because, uh, you know, I'm going to need a pencil. I'm going to need oh, some yeah. stuff to make my own bootleg dice. You got to find <laughs> some way to, like, fit in, man. <laughs> or, like, provide, you gotta fit in, like, pretend with a bunch of criminals. Yes, what else are they going to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no one would ever suspect. But, yeah, uh, Clyde was one of my like Clyde first monkey char- man yeah, yeah Clyde monkey man one of my one of my first characters uh, that I was really invested in yeah I remember he was heavily based off of like a what Michael Jackson's monkey <laughs> pretty yeah pretty much he was he was a very <laughs> he was a bard monkey and his uh his form of uh his media was dancing he was like uh <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's kind of like the same race as like Wukong, right? Like Yeah. It was in another uh uh One Piece style D and D campaign. Yeah, like and I was, I, was main... I made my own homebrew world, but it had heavy one piece influence where the the planet the was basically one? like a kind of like a I don't want to say a marble, but more like a bead, where like there was a hollow section that just kind of like it all goes in from the sides and then the, uh, the acquisition incorporated? Big ass, like, massive tunnel. It's and like that area is basically like the grand line where interdimensional portals open up and these uh, multi planner energies corrupt the island. So like maybe you go to one island and this island is very closely connected to the nine hells while this other island is more closely connected to the Feywild. Or maybe totally. another island is he- corrupted by the, uh, well, you know, just so on and so forth, various just planes of existence. Blah, blah, blah. So, and then you can have, like, the traditional way of going in through either side via ship, or you could enter through the Underdark. The butthole of the world. The butthole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's basically. Like the basically, journey to the center of the earth. <laughs> yeah, just imagine that, but, like, if it's just, like, a... A, a massive tunnel like dude hundreds of miles in diameter in any direction that's pretty cool oh yeah yeah i felt I good my, about that world building i think my favorite moment from that is when i uh break dance against the mime yes you danced a mime out of his career and we were using the greek pantheon for the gods so you slowly and like you kept every time you did something, you kept one upping it with such high rolls that eventually <laughs> Dionysus just... is like, hey, my guy, you're the <laughs> life of the party. Yeah. And then I summoned a divine light and threw him like 30 feet, <laughs> causing him to speak for the first time in 30 years, thus being divorced by his wife. Fucking broke his <laughs> vow of silence. God damn. <laughs> he danced a mime out of a career. All, and then all I could, we went on like a tangent of the, of just demonstrating how a divorce would happen in mime. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the tangents you go on in D&D, that really is part of the experience. The One of those parts that you don't really capture in D&D simulating games like Baldur's Gate. Are you, unfortunately, uh, but are you planning? I don't to know how you would stream, capture that. Well, are you planning to stream or record next session? Yeah, I we will either stream or record. Uh, bare minimum, I'm recording it mm-hmm. as we're preparing to properly stream. I want things to be nice and presentable when we actually go for a full live stream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, to, to anyone who doesn't know. Uh, once we, you know, get the actual files and stuff, we got an ov- overlay made for the One Piece campaign. We by did. the lovely Rebecca, who created the One Piece icon. Yeah, she did an amazing job. to that. that. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yeah. She's a, she's an ama- amazing artist. Shout out to Rebecca. Yeah. She's going to be uh, doing our banner, too, um, for our social medias and stuff. Yeah, yeah, she did my my banner for my Twitch. Nice. Which is also plug that at the end of the show. Hell yeah! So, have you been doing the Twitch stuff long? Um, not really. I've been doing it on and off for (sighs) a little bit. I haven't logged in a lot of hours streaming, but I'm I'm working on it. Yeah, let doing me say it the trick all... is consistency. Yeah, doing it only through a console at the moment is a lot harder than the, through a PC because I have to stop the stream for one game, then start it again for another. While <laughs> on a PC, I can just have OBS running and then yeah, just switch cool. games. Yeah, yeah but... all set to a button. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm currently building a better PC than the one I'm using right now. But when I get that up and running, hopefully I can actually start streaming on that and not just what I have for a console. Yeah, that would be ideal. Right. I'm having a, a friend uh, help me build it by uh, recommending me parts, and then he sent me out a, a CPU. Nice, nice. So, yeah, it it's a process, a, a very painstakingly long and expensive process. <laughs> <Hear process>. that. <laughs> There's certainly a lot of investing that goes into starting any kind of stream. Oh, yeah. But it'll be worth it. It'll get, definitely give me something to do when I'm not working. <laughs> Yeah, uh, fair enough. A, a lot of people are trying to be like, okay, maybe if I strike it big on the internet, I can quit the day job. And right. like, ultimately, all yeah. you get is I'm still working most of a part-time job or a full-time job. Right. It, it's not easy. Oh, no. Getting getting started is one of the harder parts and then building a following. Mm-hmm. But as long as think... you... Go ahead. Oh, I think doing it with the intention of, you know, the money is a lot harder than doing it with the intention to create or entertain, you know? Yeah. Like, doing it for the money is just kind of a a greedy mindset. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And then, you know, that, makes, that, that never seems to work that, out that know? way. It makes content feel forced and mm-hmm. very ad-heavy. Yeah, people can tell when you don't really enjoy what you're making or you know what you're doing. Right. It's definitely good to to network yourself and interact with those that are are welcome to you networking. Mm-hmm. And not just shamelessly plugging yourself in everybody's Twitch chat or Discord. I hear that's effective though and uh, <laughs> I I just I'm just the kind of guy that I, I can't do that everywhere. That's how all the bots find you. Man. Uh, right. Uh, I have this useless emotion in me called shame that prevents me from doing those things. Like, we'd probably be a lot bigger if, if I did. need to bring, I, bring shame back. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough shaming? Yeah, yeah. I need to bring back shaming. Mm, I wonder if we could make like a shame roll in D and D. Make a shame check. Roll for shame. 
I think the world would be a different place if people started shaming people again. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm you know, I, I think shaming could be a a type of a uh, like a type of intimidation, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like mockery, Mo- mockery. Yeah, so, like, yeah. vicious mockery. Make but you feel bad for yourself. <laughs> very, very rude. <laughs> Uh, and the the enemy of this is that you have to make a wisdom save against uh, you know being aware of yourself or gain one round like self awareness check. Like, you become cursed with depression. <laughs> <laughs> that function like fatigue. <laughs> yeah. Ah right. um, oh, damn. All right. So, so what wondering... do we got for the monster? Oh, I was about to ask you about the news. <laughs> okay, okay, I can hit the news. Hit the news. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is TNF bringing you nerd news. Yeah, this week in nerd news, Matt Coville, the internet's favorite dungeon master that isn't Matt Mercer. We got two major mats in the DM playing field, guys. Excuse me? What? No, you didn't. You don't know who Matt Coville is? What do you mean? Matt Mercer isn't the only D&D man? Oh He's not the God. only D&D man. <laughs> oh, my God. So oh, my God. There's more Matt. I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for those that don't know, Matt Coville, uh, the head of uh, MCDM, he has a channel on YouTube and basically his whole deal for years now has been teaching people how to play D and D, how to run the game, how to be a better player, how to be a better DM uh, can talking about things on how to run games better, how to build better settings, even doing some actual play streams, which like, uh, I believe one of them is called the chains of Acheron. Mm-hmm. Very popular. And he's done a lot of big stuff. But this past year, because of the OGL debacle, and maybe just because he was a good game designer to begin with, and writer. So, he's already got those two uh, things under his belt. Uh, Him and a a crew that he put together started making their own game, trying to be independent of D&D. Like, going beyond what all of D&D has become, so that they can make something that's not beholden to traditional D&D rules. Like, just something that can be as good if not better mm-hmm. you know creating a, a genuinely fun experience right and recently they they've managed to get a uh, holy shit 30,177 backers damn nice yeah for their kick for their crowdfunding so that that's pretty good and that amounts to about 4.6 million raised. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Yeah, right? Oh, like, people... Uh, have you ever heard of that many people dumping that much money into starting a new system? Like, you can't even say Pathfinder in a D&D anything oh, without someone uh, be like, no, I'm not changing. This is the rules I know. Uh, I'm staying right here. Like, the full boomer attitude. You- Dude, like what can you like what can't you do with that amount of money like you could create like a, a 3d balder's gate of your own like <laughs> <laughs> well maybe maybe but oh no this God. is all pen and paper this That's guy crazy. i believe he had a little bit of a background in uh Ouch. actually working for yeah he worked for wizards of the coast for a while okay so, mm. yeah uh not up until recently because like obviously things have changed a lot i i think maybe things would be slightly better if he was in it but i don't think he'd have any real power because uh watsy is just like mm, they're beholden to hasbro what you're gonna do right 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 the whole hasbro debacle yeah it, it, it's <clears throat> a lot but hopefully things uh, come out really well with their rpg the mcdm rpg is I'm really looking forward to see what comes out of their rules. I've heard like a, a little bit of some stuff from there. I'm not going to go too into detail because Matt has expressly stated that a lot of those things are subject to change. Like uh, how weapons work and whatnot and the like having like classifications and like certain abilities based off of weapon classifications. And right. I like that idea. It, you kind of see some stuff like that in 
other systems and some things work better than other, but they're really trying to fine tune the best possible thing. So hopefully we can find someone that'd okay. be willing to run something like that in our crew. That that'd be really nice. I'd like to try that'd that. That'd be out. really cool. I would and love then, if we had more people running more things. Yeah, I'd like to see a couple campaigns going on in the server. Like we've had a few people volunteer, then they just kind of like flake. And it's like okay, you know, you you got your life. I get yeah, it. Yeah, understandable. Like I I feel like I have a sense for storytelling but i get off track and forgetful so many times that i feel like i just wouldn't have the the attention span to dm it's it's a lot <laughs> that <could> definitely <laughs> say. Uh, i feel severely underprepared every time i run a game uh, yeah. we're <laughs> running a game tomorrow and uh, both of you know very well that i am just like i'm underprepared but I did pick up a book recently. Oh my god! And you know, really? Jeff Ashworth does not miss my guy. This is the uh, oh, this, the light is just awful Look, if, here. If but... a Lamar, what's his name, Lenar Burton or whatever, has Lavar taught me Burton. Any, if if, yeah. he, if that man has taught me anything, it's that reading is key. <laughs> you know, take a look. Reading it's rainbow. in a book. <laughs> not gonna say reading that last rainbow. line over on my end to send my wife to PTSD. Rainbow. Very good. <laughs> she does not like reading Rainbow. I won't. <laughs> I had that was all I had to watch when I would oh, whenever I'd go to my yeah. grandmother's when I was younger. Dude, me too. Yeah, because she had I, just had basic cable. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. I, I too am a basic, not even a basic cable. It's just like whatever I could get the antenna to pick up. You know that that was my Stay time. Stay tuned to Dungeons and Talk shows where we talk about D and D, old TV shows, D and D campaigns. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if anyone wants to run their games a little bit more pr with proactive role playing, as the title of this book suggests, I highly recommend picking up the Game Master's Handbook of Proactive Role Playing. It has nice. kinds and strategies for running uh, player driven narratives for basically whatever system you want to run with what, what have you what have you learned so far what's give me give us a little taste okay let me open up oh, excuse me <laughs> what the fuck is that? i'm <laughs> so sorry <laughs> honest you know what that... <laughs> i'm so sorry that came out of nowhere it's okay. it's okay. <laughs> yeah but a, a lot of the basic stuff is that Focusing more on the players being active in the story as opposed to reactive. Uh, for example, True. your your traditional uh, plot for it, it it's very effective. Most plots and stories have the main character being reactive to a situation, not actually pursuing things on their own out of the gate to push the story, but the the narrative pushes the hero to push the story. Mm -hmm. For, for example, like, okay, uh, in, let's say, Lord of the Rings, okay, evil uh, entity got a ring, ring of power, he wants it, it's been pushed into uh, our protagonist's capable hands, and he must take this and bring it to the mountain and throw it into the mountain. Now, that's a very reactive story. The, the oh. protagonist has to He's given decide the what they're going to do. They have to, how do I deal with the situation at hand? Mm -hmm. Now, this can take form in, okay, maybe uh, the, the princess has been kidnapped. She's been taken to this evil man's castle. Uh, what do you do? Well, obviously, we have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Now, the inverse mm -hmm. of that would be, is something that's kind of exemplified. It even talks about it in the book, the... Uh, concept of a evil campaign now the reason that a evil campaign is so seductive for many people i mean how many times have you heard a bunch of players be like hey let's just run an evil game we, we can be the villains I've, I've heard of them i i'm always like someone who is more intrigued by the story of villains like <laughs> what like what caused them to be the villain that they are yeah, like, yeah. Why are they the, the backstories are big for that there, my door has been shut. <laughs> so, basically, the difference between your typical reactive hero 
and the typical villain campaign is that villains they don't wait for a paladin to be like i'm going to save the needy and save the poor and we're going to uh, have health care free for all and then as a villain you're like oh well i can't let health care be free i, I gotta go <laughs> stop this guy no, no, that, that's not that's not the plot you, you don't start an evil campaign be like we gotta stop them making health care free no 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 absurd got... how no. dare they i mean maybe if you want a doofenshmirtz uh style evil campaign then... <laughs> i'm gonna We're... triple Free healthcare healthcare the <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, unless your care unless your party has been raised by ocelots and uh, their mothers didn't show up to their own birth i don't think that's quite the <laughs> way that you would run such a campaign no uh, in a evil campaign, each of the players typically have their reasons, like you said, a backstory, why they want to be evil. And that's a driving force. Uh, one of the reasons why for our current campaign, I wanted everyone to have a dream is for them to have a driving force. By having that driving force, that's something that you want to actively put into the world. Maybe someone in the campaign is like, hey, I want to be the best there is at this, and I am going to go out there and get this. I'm going to get this MacGuffin that I know about to achieve said goal. Or maybe uh, in the case of Scrim's character, he wants to go and rescue his kingdom. He, he is displaced from his kingdom and he has to return to that kingdom to quell the revolution and set things right. Now, he's so far off from that that he has to find a crew to get him there. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole journey in itself. He's got a long overarching goal and it takes a lot of effort for him to get to that point. And we're just starting out, but that right there is a big driving force. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the sky is really high up and we got to find a way to get there. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He fell right out of the sky. We got to go lived. up. Were you, were you even like, did you take damage from your fall or? I don't oh, that, that's the cool thing. Like his race has slow fall. Basically, I mean, like, oh yeah, fall. It, the yeah, Skypeans have like an innate feather fall. That makes sense. Makes sense. They got they tiny ass wings. wings, so they can fall without taking damage. Like hummingbird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. Like not, they can't full on fly, but they can fall. Okay. I look forward to seeing it's like your character. Little cupid wings. <laughs> yeah i really want to see your character i want to uh get it made and everything yeah we should have everyone's character art ready for the game then so we got to get I'm like really a group excited. photo all of them together ah uh, yes oh, yeah. that, that i'd love to see get wanted posters made for them oh yeah. don't think i'm not thinking on that one <laughs> <laughs> wanted I've posters gonna be a big thing for it. that'll be really fun yeah but like i said the the main thing is that with all of that stuff, you want the players to be actively wanting something and mm -hmm. actively going for something. So there's nothing wrong with having reactive plot lines for your players. You throw out plot hooks, maybe they bite here and there. But having active things that the players want, and even when there's nothing going on, they're out there pursuing those goals, that pushes a story forward, no matter what. Right. True. Ask so them, think, you know, what are you, what is your character doing at this moment? Like, what are they up to? What are they thinking? You know, what's yeah. on their mind? Like, do they have any goals for today? Like, you know, something like that. Right. Yeah, and that's something that this uh, book kind of, I, I wish I was sponsored by this book because I can't stop singing the praises because Jeff Ashworth does not miss, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, Shout out I'm, to them. <laughs> honestly, they had the foreword done by Jenny D. So that that's neat. I don't know if you guys have heard of her. She does like D and D YouTube stuff. I don't think so. All right. So moving on to our other bit of uh, nerd news this week. So Mid Journey has been brought into the artist lawsuit that has now touched Watsy again. Oh boy. <clears throat> What, you didn't think they would go a week without being in the news, Jesus would you? Christ. Oh my god. It keeps we just going. Talk, we just talked about this, man. We did. <laughs> yeah, so basically the 
the artist this one is a little different than usual with Watsi. The this uh the artists that have uh started a lawsuit with Midjourney have alleged that it, Midjourney has scraped copyrighted Magic the Gathering art to train AI. This does not surprise me in the sense that I would imagine a bunch of board members up top are scraping their the art that they paid for uh, with in that whatnot to be able to just run a bunch of that shit because although they say they're against AI and they're tra- because the crowd is you know pressuring them there's no way they're not just like oh hey we already own this stuff we got the copyrights we could just yeah. train that shit. the power of efficiency man I think these companies really care who makes the art like as long as they can pump out as much artwork as they can it doesn't yeah, bro. if it, it doesn't passes matter, it. and like now that they're like they are, they're only concerned because people are concerned like yeah it's one of those things where i i used to hear this uh, when i was a kid where uh, some adult would be like you're not sorry that you did it you're sorry that you got caught exactly. and like you know that that makes sense i also wonder if uh in the copyrighted magic art thing is the art copyrighted to the artist or to the company that paid the artist to make it i think that's a good question right like i I don't know maybe somebody else out there knows i think it's a mix of both right like they have like legal copyright but like they have like the artist's copyright Right, they 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 don't have the copyright over the artist's entity. Yeah, yeah, it, it's weird because like sometimes like you can make something for a company, but as soon as it's made, you don't own it. Yeah, yeah. basically, like they can do whatever they want because it's theirs now. Like, yeah, it's like a the any like any actors for Disney, for example. Mm-hmm. You act for Disney. Guess what? You don't own your likeness anymore. You don't own yeah, your face. Yeah, the movies you worked in like that work that's theirs like <laughs> yeah they pay you to do it once maybe yeah. you get some royalties for a few years but like after that they own it and they can sell as much stuff that has you in it without your consent as much as you want because and it that's can be how, whatever i mean like yeah. you know varies with contract to contract i suppose but usually uh, yeah, probably like, contracts like, are some wily shit dude like yeah, like if they like now a lot of people like actors and stuff are going through that. A lot of voice actors don't like that their likenesses are being sold and their voices are being replicated. Yeah, right. I mean, think about it this way: if you pay an actor to do some work for you, you own all the voice stuff that they just did. And then if you run all that stuff through an AI algorithm to synthesize their voice, and there you go, you don't need to hire the actor again. You already got everything you need like i think we're going to see a lot of lawsuits and regulations set up in the future along those lines yeah I and mean, as the technology gets like easier and easier to use and better and better at you know what it does they're like they could take all the movies that already exist and be like we don't need actors anymore we got the cgi to replicate literally everybody like, I, like you know, we can how take far a away is, can from a picture yeah like and replicate yeah, your likeness that's that's uh, the future we're going towards and like there's not really anything there's a movie that about. was made not too long ago i forget the name of it but they uh, use the face of a dead actor like, oh this guy. yeah i know what you're talking about yeah was, you know uh, the, one. the newest flash movie oh yeah they, Did they used, do that too yeah they used uh like ai to replicate the uh um Fucking Christopher Reeves Superman. Mm-hmm. They used the AI to replicate his face. I hadn't heard about that one, but I know these kind of things are becoming more and more common. Yeah. Now, what I'm wondering is like AI is becoming such a big thing. Where will we go within the next few years? I think the singularity for technology is fast approaching because of the advent of <laughs> AI and how yeah. much it's progressed in the last few years. Like, we got oh, all these yeah. artists out there, and I do sympathize with you guys. Like, it sucks that your stuff is being used without your consent for things. And in some cases, you're absolutely right. It is your copyright. And in other cases, 
sucks to you, buddy. It sucks to be you, dude, because like someone like, else owns your work. Look, bro, like we we all knew it's what the, the internet NFT was. Craze. Like it's it's the mm. internet, bro. Like anything on the internet, like once you put it out there, unless yeah. your name is slapped onto the middle where nobody can yeah as long as you have a big old watermark you know I mean? right across it like, I, I always really... sign all my shit <laughs> you know i know it's it's a hard it's a hard thing to get into it's not like you know a hundred years ago where you're like this is a one-of-a-kind art piece that i spent weeks to make like <laughs> you know now someone could take a picture of it run it through a scanner and just yeah. replicate the whole thing right I mean, dude, we did something similar for some of the character art for the campaign where we didn't steal art outright because we're not scumbags. We just had <laughs> some of our party members who like to do some art, you know, some drawing, some hand drawn stuff. And we yeah. wanted to touch things up so that it's more digitally presentable and clean because you take a picture of a, something you drew with your iPhone like. The paper is going to look all like Ugh, you get the wrong glare. Yeah. A little and then you get every uh, you get every that kind picture. of yellow. Yeah, you yeah, get every, that yellowish like, effect from the paper. It's just like, you know, not doing the picture any justice. So with yeah. the AI upscaling, you just like, okay, boom, boom. It just kind of like does its own few steps to digitize, maybe make a couple alterations. And you can even add a couple prompts in there to be like, oh, I forgot to do this thing. M make the hair black. I, I right. wasn't good with the and, red. And people, people think about that and they get like controversial because they're like, oh, well, because you used AI, like, like that's basically what it's for. You know, that's that's a tool. AI is there to help you. Yeah, like look people at who aren't digitally art inclined, you know, who don't have drawing pads and stuff like that. This yeah, is I a sure great draw. option for them. Like the art that you know that we got made by Forrest, you know, that's my girlfriend Sienna draw. Like it looks really good. <laughs> like, yeah, it it looks good, and it's faithful to what Sienna made in the first place. Yeah. Right. I think that's what she was, you know, a little concerned about, you know. And I think it makes her happy to see that they're like basically exactly the same. Like Yeah. Right. I, it's just I touched that, up a little bit. Yeah, it, it was really just an upscale. Also to the hair for Micah's insane. looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Micah was so hyped and then she saw the muscle definition because like I know when it was first drawn, she's like, Oh, I, I want this to be a major muscle mommy. Yeah. And that shined through on the finished product quite nicely. Okay. Mm. It, the the hair was giving me like lollipop chainsaw energy. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it absolutely works. And I feel like that vibes with uh, how Micah's playing and portraying the character very yeah. well. And this is very much a tool and process that a lot of D&D players are likely to continue to use mm -hmm. at their tables to produce the art that they want. I did something I mean, very who, similar with Ezra. Who doesn't want to see, you know, high quality art of their character, you know, bring their exactly. character to life. Yeah, I mean, you, you give also, a general outline. I was going to ask you, you know, uh, could you get Forrest to do my snail as well? Uh, yeah, I could do that. I'll send him the snail because the snail looked sick, dude. Yeah, I would love if I could get like a little, little small one so I could like put him on to Tonga's shoulder or something. <laughs> Super shrink it, pop him on the shoulder. Yeah, put him you on like <laughs> Siata's head or whatever. Like, <laughs> they I want to make an animation where it pops right up, like, better, 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 better. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really cool. They do have uh, wrist transponder snails in the uh one piece universe oh, cool. i do know that they're the tripic they're typically low range and stuff that i would probably have him on like a like a necklace and it would be like <laughs> you're just a shell <laughs> he's just chilling the giant like, conch yeah. shell yeah it'd be like a big like shell <laughs> just <laughs> <on> <laughs> <kind of mischief. laughs> they usually keep them in pockets or something don't they i don't know <laughs> like pockets or they have their own uh like designated spot on the ship. So i was looking at you know the design that she did for the show and i was really digging it i was like oh yeah man, like it really cool. has that hem that heavy uh, aspects from your character as a transponder snail should and yeah. i love it and considering how she isn't all that familiar with one piece i love the you know just how she went about it awesome and I feel like it's great to have uh, a few people that know a lot about the One Piece world and then newcomers. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, shit. <laughs> the, the mix is fantastic because I don't have to worry about people being like, oh, well, that's not 
actually how this works. And yeah, I like being able to ask. Um, you, like, actually, is it that's not Can, I do how... <laughs> <laughs> Can I overthrow this empire? <laughs> like. <laughs> Can yes. I overthrow the world government? See, sow the seeds of deceit. <laughs> I would say yes. I mean, that was a dude, Dolph uh, that's one of the reasons dude. that I chose the North Blue. <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned Dolph Mango because he is very much a part of the North Blue history. And I had to research some of that. So there is legitimately a chance that you guys could run into young D- Dolph Mango and his crew. Ooh. What is what is the timeline? Like, uh, are we in the same like time period as like the one piece time period for example or like well yeah like this uh takes place two years after the death of gold roger who is the guy that kicked off the great pirate era so okay gotcha and gotcha. when he got to the island he laughed how long <laughs> is the story of one piece after the death of this pirate guy oh, oh. so uh where One Piece is at now, it's like 24 years uh, after his death. Okay. So, oh, okay, okay. So we're like in the very, very beginning. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, like the dawn of the Great Pirate Era. So there's all kinds of pirates all both, over the place. Before warlords, before emperors, like interesting, interesting. So, so is there a chance? No, probably not. We we can't like run into. The, the straw hat pirates huh? <laughs> uh, there are a couple of them because like most of them haven't been born yet but right. there are some of them that are around like their parents or something <laughs> like... yeah well oh, okay. there, like... there's a, a few that are older than the rest right mm. well there's shanks who was you know like a, a child slash teenager during the beginning of the after Roger's execution, so he that he would be starting out on his own crew, and then so would Buggy and yeah, all of them. Interesting. And there's a lot more uh, notable characters, like uh, some admirals that you might come across, and then you also got to factor in like actual straw hats. Um, there would be Jim Bay, Robin, and Brooke, and Frankie. Uh, yeah, Frankie would just the... be like a, a kid going through his backstory at, at Water 7. Uh, Robin's in the West Blue, so y'all ain't seeing her. Not a chance. Right, unless you right. find a way to get into the West Blue. And <laughs> then Brooke is somewhere in the Grand Line dealing with uh, his situation. So there definitely are sti- there are warlords. Oh, yeah. Okay. One piece so, is a yeah. very confusing timeline sometimes. <laughs> it, well, it's one of those things where, like we've said before, when it comes to D&D, play and run what you know. And I know quite a bit about One Piece, so that's good enough. And what I don't know, I can make up. That's the cool thing about DMing in general. I can just make shit up. It's good to go. Hell, there's time travel now. <laughs> Dude, it gets ridiculous. Yeah, there's always time travel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a devil fruit that you can be like, okay, guys, I'm going to throw you 20 years in the future. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah there, there's that all was, kinds of stuff. That was a sad story. <laughs> Yikes. All right, we'll speaking of go. ocean fuckery, guess I should get into this week's monster. Boom, segue. <laughs> it's almost we, like we've been we gotta doing get you a stinger uh, I, keep I was forgetting. just thinking about that man <laughs> i gotta come up with like a rhyme or something mm. that'd be cool I'd do like a monster bit. mayhem <laughs> so this week i want to talk about mermaid slash merfolk this is relevant this is relevant you know, there's there's always a lot of ocean fuckery. We have no idea what's going on down there. No idea what exists. There's something new being found like every other day. Dude, like, this is what Lovecraft. Uh, yeah, this is what Lovecraft was afraid of. Like, if you look at most of H.P. Lovecraft's work, it's just a dude was afraid of the ocean, tentacles, uh, and like fish people, and like uh, all kinds of grotesque fishy things. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Man just had a fish phobia. <laughs> hey, some fish can be actually pretty scary. Yeah, I that's, look. I'm half angler fish, man. Look, <laughs> exactly. I was just about to mention the angler fish. So, a merfolk had the upper uh, a merfolk person had the upper body, arms, and head of a fair creature, human, from the waist up, and instead of legs, they had a fish-like tail from the hips down. Also distinguishing them from humans were the gill slits along their necks, the slight webbing between their fingers, and their pupils exhibiting an ice blue or pale silver tone. On average, mermen grew to be around 8 feet, 2.4 meters in length, and had broader shoulders, while mermaids grew only slightly shorter. On average, they weighed around 400 pounds, 180 kilograms. And it was unheard of for merfolk to become overweight due to their active lifestyles and possess greater strength than their physiques would imply. Which also makes sense because, you know, you're constantly existing in, like, the pressures of the ocean. You've you got to be swimming like, underwater. So really you strong, be strong, bro. you got to be fit. <laughs> like, that's like another Michael little, Phelps like, is no slouch, dude. I couldn't take him in a fight. Have you seen that, dude? He's built. Yeah. That's the thing, like, I feel like people don't consider when they're like, oh, I got... They, or they got pulled down, they're getting yanked. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. I, I've heard some terms for that kind of strength. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that here, <laughs> unless you bleep it. <laughs> Fuck, um, where did I put the bleep button? <laughs> the coloration of their eyes, hair, and skin varied as much as those of humans, as to the coloration of their fins and scales, some colorations being more common in certain areas. Merfolk across Faerun exhibited all the varied skin tones of the continent's humans. They tended towards pale pink or tan, though some around the Alamem- Alambra Sea and the Vilhan Reach had darker tones. I ah, feel like if, if Black Mermaids, were, mermaids. So, <laughs> hooray, that Disney hooray, remake hooray, coming hooray. on strong now. <laughs> I feel like if mermaids really did exist, they would be like deep sea, like almost black, like or like bioluminescent. Uh, or tra- no, no, this, translucent. Yeah. You'd a mermaid pop up and be like, hey, big boy, you'd be like, oh god, I can see your heart. It's the like only reason little- I don't think they'd be translucent is because they probably have scales of some kind. You gotta protect the fleshy bits. Yeah, like they they would be like predators. I don't think they would have like their vitals exposed like that. I I could see kind of like a uh, like a crustacean kind of like skin, probably yeah. skeleton Ooh. to like, uh, to deal with the deep pressures. Oh yeah, like a like a shrimp with like the plates. Yeah. Oh, I like that. They then that kind of mer that kind of merfolk would be almost insectoid in nature. Ooh, yeah, yeah, because it's so limiting and the pressure is so deep. Like, I mean, I that could, makes that's sense. the thing with these. Like, you can have them adapt to like anything. Like, it's right. So cool. Y'all know that's that lobsters have X ray vision. You know, lobsters are biologically immortal. Yes, there is actually a cult that is trying to make a uh, Lovecraftian-sized lobster <laughs> just by constantly letting it molt and grow larger. Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> are trying to use like lobster blood and stuff to like figure out how to extend the human lifespan. It's crazy, <laughs> right? Like jellyfish DNA. Yeah, fucking. All they're gonna end up doing is getting Jordan Peterson on a tirade about lobsters. (laughs) The turn of the lobsters game. (laughs) The the lobsters are giving us a hierarchy, an ancient hierarchy. (laughs) So the most common hair colors were light brown or blonde, as these helped them to better blend into their environment. The rarest of hair colors were blue and silver. These born with either were considered to have great destinies and so would be raised and watched over by their entire clan. So the coloration like, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the little mermaid would be ostracized for being a ginger amongst all of these <laughs> mermaid Probably. merfolk. Like, get yourself like, some actual camo hair, bitch. You need to hide <laughs> from these surface dwellers. She'd be like a like a very vibrant like fish. Like <laughs> Damn. I guess it fits her personality, I guess. 
I have and a she, working I, theory I, for that movie, and the entire theory is that the, the prince dude doesn't actually love her because she's a siren. The only reason that Ursula wanted that voice is because she's a siren, just like her mom. And if she was to go up uh, to the surface and start using that siren voice, Prince would just fall in love with her right away. No questions asked. Exactly like what he did when he fell in love with uh, Ursula using her voice. That's the point. That's why they were like, your songs are so beautiful. You're such an amazing singer, blah, 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 blah. Look at this stuff. He's a siren. Isn't yeah. it neat? And also <laughs> a child. So <laughs> <laughs> the purity. <laughs> so the coloration of merfolk fins and scales range from a deep Kelly. I don't know what that means. Deep Kelly green Kelly to a brilliant green. silver. I don't know. Maybe like a kelp green. Maybe, Maybe like yeah, a kelpy mean. green. Though some colorations outside of this could be found. Makes sense. Fit into whatever surroundings. Some Cerosian merfolk exhibited brighter colors and even scales that were striped or speckled. While some merfolk in the Alamber Sea or Vilhan Reach had scales that ranged from copper to golden. Oh, wow, like a dragon. Oh, yeah. In terms of clothing, merfolk often adorned themselves with shells and coral. And Cerosian merfolk in particular had a widespread practice of tattooing across their culture. Hmm, that sounds cool. That does sound really cool. I do like the merfolk tattoo idea. So let's talk about real life folklore, right? That's always fun. <laughs> Start out is like a what is it? Um, manatees. Yeah, people kind of believe them to be like manatees. Sorry, I had the autistic urge to see what Kelly Green looked like, and it's just like your most basic green. Oh, is it really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> green. Kelly Green oh. just sounds like some. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. Like a like an Eagles jersey. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, Kelly Green just sounds like some overweight news reporter. <laughs> <laughs> and now to Kelly Green. Coach, Hi guys. Thanks, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> I'm coming to you live from the scene. This fictional news reporter is getting fucking roasted, bro. <laughs> <laughs> If there's a real Kelly Green out there reporting on the news, I'm not <laughs> sorry. This is just funny. Get rooked. <laughs> you, you, your entire existence is made up by me, and as your creator, I I, I should apologize. <laughs> I, I hereby <laughs> sentence you to the butt of the joke. Oh my god. So, the in folklore, sentencing. a mermaid is an aquatic creature with the head of the upper body a female human with the tail of a fish. Mermaids appear in folklore of many cultures worldwide, including Europe, Asia, and Africa. Mermaids are sometimes associated with perilous events such as floods, storms, shipwrecks, and drownings. In other folk traditions, or sometimes within the same traditions, they can be benevolent or ben- beneficent, right? bestowing boons or falling in love with humans. Give me that boon. <laughs> Look at these boons. Aren't they neat? <laughs> the male equivalent of the mermaid is the merman, also a familiar figure in folklore and heraldry, although traditions about and sightings of mermen are less common than those of mermaids. I would imagine, like, if you think about, you know, tribal human species, right? Like, the men are probably like the hunters or the gatherers, you know? So, or. Maybe- they're hunting whales, so like, or they, alternatively, the men are whaling. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Alternatively, I could also see like if the men are the ones that like raise and protect like the the tribal like ground, a, you know, or like, like a seahorse kind of seahorses. Yeah. They like yeah, protect the nest while the females hunt. You know, that's why they're always like, you know, the ones that are seen. I would kind of believe that. Maybe they don't swim as far because, like, uh, with the mermen are like top half They're fish, probably bigger, bottom yeah. Half, bottom half man. They're probably <laughs> Which, a lot that'd, be a, that'd be a bizarre <laughs> thing to see coming up on the beach. You just be big old uh, half fish up top, all man down bottom. Jesus, <laughs> that, 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 I'm a Dick fish <laughs> sliding through the sand. <laughs> that'd be the most uncomfortable thing to introduce to your party as a merman in a setting. <laughs> you, Put it out of its misery, please. <laughs> <laughs> what God's name is that? Hi, so, my name is Kennel, <laughs> and I am a merman. The Western <laughs> concept of mermaids as beautiful, seductive singers may have been influenced by the sirens of Greek mythology, which were originally half bird-like. 
but came to be pictured as half fish like in the Christian era. Historical accounts of mermaids, such as those reported by Christopher Columbus during his exploration of the Caribbean, may have been sightings of manatees or similar. Wait, Columbus animals. has reports of mermaids? Yeah, you didn't know that? People Shit. think well, you know that what? he <laughs> saw like manatees and stuff, and he was suffering from like the sea madness and all, and all that stuff. Mm. But he, he sea had. Sea madness makes of... you down bad for seals and manatees? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So he had accounts on like his notes and stuff of seeing mermaids. His crew seeing mermaids and stuff like that. Maybe the mermaids all ran away when a bunch of down bad men just showed up and they're like, yo, they're like, I please get a... leave us alone. We're just trying to sing on our rocks. <laughs> Would you all just stop crashing into my fucking rocks? I'm just singing over here. Like, I just want to sing comfortably in my home. Yeah. I can't take all this death and destruction. I'm going to go sing somewhere else. Just like the women today, they don't want the male attention. They just want to be. They, the they don't. They just so, do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> well, th- they want the right male uh, attention. And let's yeah, just face yeah. it. No kings are sailing the ocean blue. No, no, not anymore. Just a bunch of grubby that. sailors. All the Viking kings are gone. <laughs> <laughs> all the Vikings. Yeah. No, I'd say that. Uh, you know the, the real fantasy of the little mermaid is a prince on a ship yes pretty much so sliding back to the forgotten realms here merfolk generally lived in isolated settlements within coral reefs or cliffs that were honeycombed with numerous passages and rooms some lived within underwater cities of their own design built from coral rocks and shells such communities tended to have netted pens where fish were kept like livestock they trained aquatic animals, such <laughs> as giant such seahorses, to serve as their guardians or steeds. They were particularly known to train barracudas for this purpose, having 3 <laughs> to 18 protecting their communities. Merfolk were an omnivorous people, both harvesting underwater plant life and hunting aquatic animals to eat. They were also known to herd and raise certain species of fish, fish much like surface dwellers did with livestock. All right. Now okay. they they are only uh, like a CR one eighth, so they're pretty basic. You know, they're really? basically humanoid. Yeah, you know, they have the same abilities as like human tribes. I, I'd imagine their strength would be higher. <laughs> yeah. So looking at their stats here, uh, they have a strength of ten, dexterity of thirteen, constitution of twelve, intelligence of eleven, wisdom of eleven, charisma of twelve. You know, so pretty basic. Their only real trait is the amphibious. Yeah, I'd say I'm going to get the jump on the IRL fight score this time. I'm out. I'm done. I don't do well with water unless you give me a in the water, some I'm jumper fine. cables. I ain't winning this one. Yeah, no. I, I mean, they were generally known to wield crossbows, daggers, javelins, nets, and tridents. They also use grappling hooks when performing attacks on the surface dweller ships. Holy shit. <laughs> they're, like, they're the scorpion of the water. Get over yeah. here. It looks, yeah, like you, you're just walking around your ship and look over to see your guy, like, I don't know, watching the, the wheel. You see a fucking grappling hook come out of the water, hit him in the chest, rip him off the ship. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> you got the Wilhelm scream and everything. Yeah. Like, what do you do? You're like, um... <laughs> We're out in Jerry? the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Jerry! <laughs> what, what does the party do if you have that as your encounter? Like, harpoons yeah. come up, they're ripping people off the ship and drowning them down into the deep. Like, if one of the players gets hit with that, like, how are you getting out of that? You better pray it's not one of the, like, the wizard or something. Hey, be, be happy like, you guys got a fish. Cleric harpoon. Boy. I'm diving straight in the water, throwing hands. <laughs> you just like yeah. it's like a dark night on the seas. You just see flashes of light beneath the water's surface. Like bodies start f- floating up. <laughs> Dude, that sounds terrifying. Why do we not see more horror movies like that? Oh, it's just a moonlit night, and you see bright flashes. Yeah, I mean. And as far as they're That's kind concerned, of how I'm picturing they, Tonga like fighting in the water, like <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> Tonga's got it. But... I kind of want him to have like the the way his bioluminescence, you know, works as he attacks. Yeah. It's like flash, flash, 
Like, <laughs> oh yeah, like it pulsates with his with as his blood pumps. Yeah, you know? with like the tempo of the battle. You know what? That's cool. I like the sound that's, of that. That's, really, that's kind of what I'm picturing. Like as like as his heartbeat increases, the flashing. Yeah, or like it'll flash a different color. <laughs> mm. In base D and D, there's not that many aquatic races. I mean. You do have Tritons uh, for the most part. I think there might be like one or two other yeah. aquatic races, like, but there's yeah, really you not got many. merfolk. They are a playable race. You know, you have the uh, what are they called? The the Kuatoa. Uh, Kuatoa. I don't know, think they're necessarily playable because that'd be so broken. But Tritons, yeah, because th- those are the what the big you one. You got. Uh, God, I don't even know. Yeah. See, it's just it's few and far between. Dude, I mean, more I'm underwater often... campaigns or like. Ocean side game would be really cool, dude. I was in a underwater campaign at one point playing a uh, cleric. Interesting. So, mm. Yeah, you know, moral of the story is never expect, never accept a, a sponge from a sea goblin. <laughs> oh, it, well, uh, you see, uh, underwater, uh, how the DM ruled it is, uh, if you were going to drink alcohol, they it would be through a sponge because like you're underwater okay. so Makes uh, sense. They, they'd store alcohol and things like that in sponges okay. so they'd have like a no, like you want to take a shot great. yeah like so your shots would be done that way oh so it's you almost, like put the sponge in your mouth just squish it or whatever yeah, suck it or whatever. Whatever. yeah oh, like that you know just geez. give it a little Makes squeeze sense. and a slurp interesting interesting yeah I, I had my triton which was sentient because everyone had a sentient item and me playing Ooh. the cleric, I got bitched at for drinking. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> like, dude, I didn't expect my magic item to start nagging me about my uh, practices. But yeah, that is that is today's monster, merfolk slash mermaids. What what's do you, you think? What's your guys' opinion? You know, do you think mermaids exist or existed at some point? I'm not going to rule it out. I mean... Uh, as much of a joke as aquatic ape theory kind of is, because there was that whole documentary that happened years ago. <laughs> yeah. you know, one. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows that one. But mm. I would say that uh, as with most m- cryptozoology and mythology, I want to believe. Yeah. yeah, I feel that. Like I can definitely see the evidence of people seeing and believing them. Like, Mm-hmm. With uh, manatees from below, they do have kind of knees. Yeah. So it knees? can be, as yeah, yeah a little bit. A lot of like ocean creatures have like bones that they shouldn't have. You know what I mean? Like structures that they shouldn't really. Have. Yeah, you're just like how how can you move like that? Like why does this fish have a pelvis? Like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. But also, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Uh, cephalopods, like octopuses and squids, yeah, they're way smarter than we like. We even like oh, we and that got are. me thinking about like giant squids. We know they exist; they're real, right? Yeah, their they're brains exceptionally are, rare. Their brains are massive, but like that makes me think about like how smart they probably are. They're avoiding people like like the fucking plague. They don't want to be yeah. seen. Right. There are very like, few recorded uh of They're meetings probably of giant so squid. smart, dude. Like, yeah, they're that, probably smart. Like, that's why I think about, have like, to be very aliens, aware, you know? So I think if aliens exist, like, they're probably in the ocean, first of all. They're probably fucking, fucking around with the, the squids and the octopuses, you know, that, that are in the deep, deep oceans. Yeah, it makes but, sense. I mean, you hide down deep enough in the ocean with a strong yeah. enough structure ain't nobody messing with you like we send our uh, brightest and our best and uh, definitely not brightest and best but uh, you know next thing you know <laughs> crunch the uh you know your makeshift submarine goes boom pop gone because that was uh, yeah. all over the news last year yeah oh yeah the titan oh yeah <laughs> <The titan. laughs> with oh, a logitech controller rest in peace man not even Mad Cat. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Mad Cat's uh, where it's at. <laughs> right. <laughs> the best third party controller. Yeah, we have 
third-party controller standards here. They're low, but they're standards. Yeah, and <laughs> like I guess it makes me think like we don't really, you know, they went to the moon once allegedly, never went back. They were like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> right? They went a little bit down into the ocean. Stop talking with it. They were like, "Fuck that shit." <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. Right. So why right. isn't that like flagged to anybody else? Why are they dodging the closest and most like logical things to research? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there are some fundamental issues on, with that. On like the ocean, like <laughs> we have no idea what's really going on. <laughs> like, right. Crazy. Like we have not explored the deepest parts of the deepest trenches. Bro, it's crazy. I mean, exploring the deepest again, parts could make for a great campaign idea, honestly. That would be really cool. Because then you could just be super creative. Like, obviously, you have full creativeness as a DM, but, like, you could throw out the wildest uh, made-up yeah, sea shit. I would love, like, just, like, the only real, like, character creation, like, simulation would be, like, you have to pick an aquatic race of some kind <laughs> and I'd be like oh man that would get my blood pumping be like oh my god i could pick so many things there's the character so creation for the fish features. man was a lot for you to begin with because you had like so many archetypes and then we just proceeded to homebrew a yeah. new one for you because I'm, like, I'm so glad that i had so much idea imagination for like the angler and then like the atlanticus and i was like oh and like the artist blended it so perfectly it made me so happy yeah the artist you hired for that was pretty amazing. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, where would you guys stand on the IRL fight score for this one? Could you take a merfolk in a let's, fight? Let's let's say on land versus in the water. Right? Let's give one. Fun yeah, because I think those are fundamentally very different arguments. Because yeah, they because they are aquatic or uh, amphibious, so they can breathe water or air, right? So I would say one v one on land. They're pretty pretty big. Like they're probably about eight feet tall, right? Uh, I think it'd be a tough one because it would it would depend strong. on their yeah. like how fast they are. I, on I land. give it like a. I mean, their stats aren't that impressive. I give it like a like a six. Like it could go either way. I think. I, I think on land I can take a seven. If it's in yeah, the water, I forget about it. Like yeah, I, no, I, no, I've no really, no I've had about a dozen <laughs> instances of almost drowning in my life. I even had like a, yeah. I was helping a friend out with a thing one time and had an entire dock collapse on me. I'm like, dude, I got enough water drama to last a lifetime. I have essentially 30 seconds before I lose. So like, no, <laughs> like... <laughs> on land, I could definitely curb stomp a merfolk, but in the water. <laughs> yeah, I nah, I am. I I can't swim. <laughs> there's yeah, there's, I'm not, I'm really there's no way. <laughs> I, I think it's one of those things where if I'm going at it with a merfolk, you, you know, we'd have that mutual understanding that I cannot, uh, I can't best you uh, in the water. You can't best me on land. Let's just go out for some yeah, sushi. I mean, bro. definitely on land. We got, we have the advantage, right? Like they don't even have legs. Get wrecked. So like, <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah, it, right, it really is overstating the, uh, the the obvious at that point because we, we all know the hell that yeah. how that goes. Obviously, you know your home turf. You got the you got the dub. But, yeah, like a real Kevin McAllister. It's type. not going to be easy on land, man. <laughs> I'm not yeah. you an easy dub. Oh man. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I I would say yeah that that I think that adequately. It, sums it up right there that maybe if i got like some salt uh, no no salt's not gonna work that's the salt that's slugs what am i thinking let's get that wasp knife with a co2 injection <laughs> holy shit that escalated <laughs> quickly hmm. how would you flavor that as a magic item <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite the dagger. Was would that be like a, like a like a dagger inscribed with like a a scroll of like gust of wind? Yeah, yeah, like a gust inscribed dagger, which is like it's inflating the uh, the person you're stabbing. Oh, that, that'd be brutal, dude. 
Mm. Call it thunder damage at that point. Just thunder force. Yeah. Uh, either way, that, that sounds reasonable. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be brutal. Yeah, it's definitely something that I would not want to be hit by. Yeah. But as it stands, uh, we do have our homebrews, uh, Sam. Generic realm. Generic realm. Generic realm. Generic realm. Lots, Lots of fun. fun. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, the generic realms. Uh, I'll, I guess I can start things off this week. Right now, I'm looking at... Uh, you know what? Let me preface this with a little something. Sam, when was the last time you saw a good bard-specific feat? Uh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I saw um, a bard college thing that I liked recently. Does that count? No, that's a subclass. Oh, I'm talking, shit. we don't see enough specific feats for classes in current 5th edition. You know, feats for specific races and classes seem to be the stuff of yesteryear. So mm -hmm. I present to you, from the mind of Johnny MHD, I think we might have featured some of his work before. Cool. Straight from, you know, the, the abyss of Reddit. So here we go. We got oh boy, right it. Arcane Crescendo. Crescendo. I gotta learn to pronounce things. <laughs> so, it's okay. prerequisite. It's gotta be a bard. Your spellcasting uh, builds to a powerful crescendo, increasing your charisma score by one to a maximum of 20. When you cast a spell at first level or higher, you gain a crescendo point. You can spend any number of these points, up to a maximum of 10 at a time, to gain a bonus to one uh, damage roll of your bard spells, equal okay. to the number of crescendo points uh, spent. Unused points reset after a long rest. So That's every time you good. use a bard spell, you can get an extra point to tack onto something like, say, your vicious mockery. So you, so you could be like, okay, uh, whenever you cast one of these things. Oh, wait, not Vicious Mockery, because that's not first level. But any of your other stuff on your bard spell list that does damage, like there's a lot of psychic stuff, you could amp it up just a little bit more, just just a tad bit. I think just it's pretty balanced for a feat, you know? Yeah, that, that, that seems pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, you probably would have liked that on Clyde, you know? Uh, hit somebody up with uh, Dissonant Whispers or something. And then being able to, like, you know, I've done a certain number of uh, spell damage today. I'm going to tack on uh, what I've accumulated and add that to it. Right. Yeah, so it it's good for a combat-oriented campaign and rewards timing. I agree. And I this one all key. comes with a sister feat. A separate thing entirely. But basically... Uh, this one says your it's called phantom chorus your music conjures ethereal voices to aid you increase your charisma score by one to a maximum of 20 as a bonus action summon a phantom chorus that follows you for one minute while active your bardic inspiration die increases by one size for example going from a d8 to a d10 or a d10 to a d12 mm-hmm once per, long rest, ah, once per long rest, at any point using your reaction, the chorus can perform a song that either heals all allies within 30 feet for 2d8 points or causes all enemies within range to make a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC or be frightened until the end of their turn. Hmm. That's actually uh, a very good. That does sound really good. Yeah, just. Imagine just jamming out and then you summon a ghost chorus and just like maybe if you're playing it like a Jack Black or like kind of a character, then all of a sudden, boom, you just have an entire band pop up behind you, all spectral and everything. Mm. And it takes air start, guitar to a whole new level. Yes. Oh, you true. Just start shred. I like that. This is having an air guitar battle. 
I, I do like the idea of air guitar battles. We need to bring that into the foray. Those are <laughs> those are a whole like contest in and of themselves. <laughs> I would imagine. It is just fake air guitar battles. Mm. Dude, if we ever catch any beef with anybody out there on the internet with this show, air guitar battle or children's card game, I don't care which. Let's go, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work this out like men. <laughs> well, yes. We'll, we'll settle our battles like real men using cardboard and imaginary right. point systems. Oh, Listen, yeah. If you've got something to say, I'm going to tell you right now, you're a third-rate uh, duelist with a fourth-rate deck. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, calm down. We need to get, <laughs> we need to get aggressive. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> okay. But... I thought we were having a playful dispute. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were selling this like men, not animals. <laughs> <laughs> dude i am so hyped for ar to get to a point where people can like what the fuck ever happened to the google glass i, I was expecting people to be dueling each other with the in the streets with their smartphones and google glass oh my god dude the future i'm just waiting oh my god i've been reading like you know i like the lit rpg books right Real yeah quick yeah tangent. like i there's this one where they were playing a game that's like an ar like they played through like their phone you know and yeah, it's like they had like these glasses that they wore that would project it into like the world. So there were people like walking around, like having like Pokemon style like fights in the street. It was so fucking cool. The future. <laughs> yeah. So like if you have your AR glasses, you can see people playing pretend. That'd be awesome, man. You know, I am very disappointed that we haven't seen anything like that really step up i mean the close, best thing we got in ar in recent years was pokemon go and let's just face it that wasn't all that impressive no there one is really the uses monster it. hunter one that is apparently pretty crazy there was also a, a pikmin one too for a little while talk about pikmin though. true <laughs> <laughs> Dude, i'm not japanese Sorry to all the pikmin fans out there i guess like all two of you <laughs> hey, they, th those they, two people pay a lot of money to nintendo to keep it in, the, in one of those top tiers today i present they pay a lot of money unfortunately to i vegetables. couldn't find the the owner or the maker of this weapon so if anyone can find out you know let us know so we can give them the love they deserve People need to sign their work. <laughs> it looks like they tried to, but it's just, you know, a random splur of characters at the end. So that's interesting. Uh, so uh, I, I think that I, might be the coordinates for. Oh, I see what <laughs> happened. Yeah, yeah. It looks like they were setting this up in. Uh, damn, I, the name escapes me because I, I am dumb right now. They, oh. It looks like they were using HTML to uh set everything up and then they had ah. a little string of code that fucked up at the end there for a image and that image may very well have been the signature or something or other true true that's what i feel like yeah because that right, looks so like code anyone, right there if anyone knows who made this spell cleaver weapon let me know so this is a weapon hog splitter looks kind of like a long meat cleaver with some runes on the blade you know yeah the legendary requires attunement it says 1d8 slashing with a weight of three pounds light finesse versatile and hurl so i guess hurl is thrown 2d4 so this blade was once well, used as a tool right. To hunt and execute criminal magic users. Magic runes along the blade became visible when its arcane features are used. So, feature one, hurl. If one hand is free, you can use your action to throw the weapon utilizing both your hands. Range 20 to 60. Okay, so that makes sense to go like... Oof. That's mm. cool. So next up, we have spell cleave. When a creature you can see makes a spell attack against you, you can use your reaction to attack the spell. Make an attack roll with spell cleaver. If your attack roll is higher than the attack roll made against you, the blade mm. cleaves the spell, absorbing the damage. The first time you hit with the melee attack in your next turn, the blade releases the absorbed energy against the target. This additional damage is the same type of damage die of the original spell. 
Hmm. I, I like it. I like that too. Next up, we have Sunder. If you hit a creature with an object with this weapon, you can choose to cast a dispel magic spell against the target as part of the attack. The spell is cast at third level, and the ability check bonus for the spell is your proficiency modifier. A very anti-mage kind of weapon. I like that concept. And if you throw that on a bad guy, you know, on the BBEG, you know, have him facing down the party full of spell uh, slingers, and there's just like, boom, he's just cutting through this. Maybe someone eventually realizes. Combat heavy. Yeah. Maybe someone eventually realizes, oh, shit, this guy's actually cutting our spells and then using them against you yeah yeah like that's vicious this is prime bad guy magic item to loot after a battle so next up speaking of uh you know countering when you see a creature casting a spell you can use your reaction to make one weapon attack against a creature in range if you hit spell cleaver cast counter spell potentially interrupting the casting of the spell the spell is cast at third level, and the ability check bonus for the spell is your proficiency modifier. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you complete a long rest. So we have counter spell. We got dispel magic. You know, we got spell absorption. <laughs> mm. Last but not least, we have relentless hunter. Spell cleaver allows you to sense the presence of any magic portal within 30 feet of you and the lingering rift scar left by any portal misty step thunder step dimension door teleportation circle ley lines banishments conjurations etc that have been used in the last hour this effect can penetrate most barriers but it is blocked by one foot of stone one inch of common metal a thin sheet of lead or three feet of water dirt if you discover the rift Damn. scar of a recently used portal you can use your action to slice spell cleaver down the scar this action cleaves open the portal, which remains open to the original destination until the end of your next turn. Dude, oh, you know geez. what that makes me think? Like Shaolin Showdown, like uh, the Tiger yeah. Claw thing. Mm. That's fucking cool. Being able to follow people who are like, oh, we got to teleport out of here. He's like, I, I love the idea of him uh, just slicing the fabric of reality to create a portal. That's just. Dude, I, so I imagine cool. like your party like escapes. They're all out of breath. Some of them are half on the ground. They're like, <sighs> they see the portal close behind them. They're like, we're safe. Do they see the tip of a blade stick out of this midair? <laughs> Here's Johnny. Oh it's like uh, it right back open. They're like, you guys thought you could escape. Major Jason vibes here. Like, he just... (laughs) The party used their last big spell slot to cast the teleportation circle. (laughs) They try to get out, and, you know, a bad guy like this, give him magic resistance just to really be a problem. They're like, I was high... I can picture this from, like, a magic bounty hunter. (laughs) Yes, yes. Oh, man. Oh, what would you name a guy like that? If he has the spell cleaver, it's got to be the mage reaper. Ooh. Maybe uh, either uh, mage reaper or uh, you know, or the, the mage. Uh, is it, uh, the wizard's woe. <laughs> oh. Oh, wizard's woe. Yeah, that, that's, that's not bad. The woe of Mistra. Uh, the mage reaver. Ah, there you go. Yeah, Reaver and Cleaver do be rhyming. Yeah, <laughs> Reaver. Like, you know, the magic I like Reaver. It. I give this a 10 out of 10. Honestly, I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, that's I, a, I do. That's a, that's a definite ad for anything that. Yeah. This is something like if somebody, like a melee character picks this up, this is just useful. You're like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. For, for your uh, marshals. Fantastic. Yeah. But I see the most utility you can get out of this being. For your bad guy, because immediately I'm looking at this and like too many 5e parties are caster heavy. This is made to be a problem Mm. and you can make anything your problem with that. Yeah. like I, I could imagine like, picturing you like put a, this on like a hex blade like warlock character. Now you ooh. you got something disgusting. <laughs> like, <laughs> like a hex blade gith yankee, like a multiversal mage hunter. Oh my god. Oh, I was hired from the far realms to hunt mages down. Oh my god. Yes. In fact, have a have like a 
like a trio. Oh, oh, oh! We're and cooking. they each have this, this. is this is the uh, the 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 standard <laughs> end of the show. Give the DMs the plot to ruin their games. Energy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> and as we do here at Dungeons yeah, and Talk yeah. Shows, we will incentivize DMs to burn it all down. Bring them down. But, <laughs> but most importantly, I, have fun. I love it. <laughs> yeah. M- most importantly, uh, kill your players with kindness. Yeah. Have fun Give while you the ruin most... their favorite character. <laughs> Please don't ruin Terrorize everything. Terrorize them with the joy of a game well spent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do like the, uh, you know, this big, like, bad. That's just such a uh, such a problem that it pursues the party. Like, something so they, the they straight can't hog, handle. Hog splitter cleaver. I need to look this up real quick. Oh, they're. I'd say big. that this might even be <laughs> even oh, better as yeah, a dual wielded weapon. They're, yeah, they're big. <laughs> it's like a nemesis kind of deal where it's yeah, so like it's, it's a one handed axe, but it's long enough for you to two hand it. Yeah, it, it says it's got the light finesse and versatile yeah. properties, and That's it great. says hurl. So I'm assuming hurl refers to the throne property. Yeah, you so, throw it like a fire axe, like. I imagine whoever wields this has got to. Oh, man. Imagine Tonga has this. Good luck, mage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just imagine, like, you, you try to, you get your hand. It's like, okay, he throws one of them, and the party manages to steal it. And it's one of the only ways to fight back. Oh, yeah. They're like, whoa. But it's attunement, so. Well, get it out of his hands all the same. You can't let this <laughs> yeah. boy have it. Yeah, once you've seen it in action, you can't be allowed to keep it. Right, you have to find a way to counteract it if there yeah. is one. You know, sometimes you got to fight fire with fire, fight magic with magic, anti magic with anti magics. Yeah, I'm gonna counter your spell with this counter spell after you counter my <laughs> spell. <laughs> I want to see yep. that stack in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> I do believe, you know, if we don't have anything else, that pretty much ends us up. Uh... <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Scrim, where can people find you? It... Uh, I mean, I I have a TikTok that I uh, post occasionally on. This is at Scrim Bimbus. Um, I have a, I have a, I have a Twitch that I occasionally stream on, but uh, that's also at Scrim Bimbus. Nice, nice. But, uh, uh, I'm also in. See, yeah. <laughs> uh, we will have to post your links in the uh, description then. Yeah. Um. I I welcome all, and you know. Just, just like to have fun. So, note to anyone that checks them out: have a sense of humor before you go in; otherwise, you might just dis- be disappointed. Might be too funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but nah, I, overselling. I, I, <laughs> 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 man. <laughs> but I do appreciate it, nonetheless. Yeah. Course, course. All right. It's great having you. It's always fun to hang out with you. Can't wait for to tomorrow's session. And yeah, as I'm, always. I'm once, uh, Our once plans are going to yeah. make us rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the get, yeah, play D&D. That's the get rich quick scheme right there. I mean, but I was talking about rich role. in game, man. <laughs> yes, c- clearly the same level of is critical role. This one voice actor that has two audiobooks under his belt and a uh, <laughs> <laughs> a relatively dead discord okay gotcha <laughs> uh, <laughs> matt mercer doesn't have a podcast yes he does <laughs> Never mind. matt right. mercer doesn't have these problems <laughs> <laughs> yep. ah dude oh, that, make that the catchphrase I bet Matt Mercer doesn't have to deal <laughs> with players walking in and burning down the whole uh, campaign he definitely does <laughs> <laughs> or did. I don't know. Listen, that Orion does not speak for all Orions. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you have to represent them, man. You're the one and only you can. 
Well, listen, maybe we should have Orion on the show. You know, which well, Orion's just... Orion? Give well, give him you... a redemption arc. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, for our next episode being our anniversary episode, let us know what you guys, you know, want from us. If you want us to do a Q&A, you want to know more about us, play games with us, you know. Anything. I'd like to hear more from any of our listeners as is, because yeah. although our yeah. listener base is relatively small, I do like from time to time we do get comments and stuff and love to hear from you guys. Yeah, I'm sure people have a lot of D and D related questions that we haven't hit, you know, or you know, whatever. Yeah, topics that haven't been touched. Right. Exactly. Well, there, there's a million and one topics, and I will yeah. joke about any of them. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We are Dungeons and Talk shows. We know some things, but mostly we're nerds. <laughs> You know. I'll have you know I have an approximate knowledge of many things. There you go. That's good. I have a, a, <laughs> that's, that's a, a lot we of try to, of useless uh, things. <laughs> that's He's all we try to impart. You know, at the end of this episode, I hope you learn something. <laughs> Certainly hope so. But we're nerds. What do we know? Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. And we'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, wait a minute. And stop.